what's up everybody? It's David here from Tough Guys TV. On this episode, we've got something super cool to share with everybody. Mazka was kind enough to send over a care package to us, sent this awesome hat, which I love. I love hats, you know that if you've watched the channel for a while. And they also sent over their new pro version of the Precision Joinery System. It's the all aluminum pocket hole jig system. This one has a little bit different features. We're going to unbox this, show you what you would get in the package, and then I'm gonna compare it to the original Mazka jig, the precision system that I've been using in a ton of the videos you've seen on the channel. So let's get right into this video. Links to social media as always. Come hang out with us and see what else we have going on. Appreciate all your support. Let's get started. All right, let's do the unboxing first here. I have not opened this version yet. There's a quick view those sidearm supports. I'm not sure if there's anything else that really changed with the actual system other than these supports, but I do want to unbox this version. So if this is the one that you bought, you'll be able to see what it is you're getting inside. All right, first up here, it looks like you've got the instruction kit. This was actually really helpful to me the first time I used one of these. It has a lot of really great information. Spend some time going through this and understanding what you are working with, and it will greatly help you First up, we've got a little box here. Let's take a look. It looks like inside of there, they did include a few bags of fasteners. That's pretty cool. This is also your drill bit. And there's up close on that drill bit. From my experience so far with the previous unit, this was very high quality. I've not had any issues with it and I've done a ton of projects. And here is that plate that goes along the bottom. This actually lets you take this unit off and use it as a portable jig. So this is pretty cool. You can clamp it down. There'll be some screws to attach to it if you wanna use this. Here's a few more screws that they included that I missed at the beginning. And here are the accessory components. One long Allen wrench, square tip bit. It's a locking ring for the drill bit so you can set your depth and the Allen wrench that goes with that. And then the last part here is the depth guide. Now this piece here is actually interesting. You spin it on the jig itself, on the base part, and it allows you to set the depth of your drill bit. It's a pretty cool, creative way of being able to do this. All right, this next part here, this looks like it might be those extension arms, at least the ends. So this part here, I'll have to take a look and uh, see how this goes together because I'm a little bit unfamiliar. I did not have this with my original setup. Again, high quality, great matte feel. Everything just feels nice. Everything feels secure. Show that a little bit closer there so you can see the quality of the components that you're getting. And let's take the unit out itself. Ooh, and it looks like it has a little bit different finish. Here is more of a silver color. I think my other one may be black, but it also could just be uh, super dusty. <laughs> All right, so let's set this down and see if we have those support arms. And yes. Here are those two pieces. Looks like solid aluminum again. High quality as usual is what you expect when you're buying one of these products. All right, well, that was a great overview of the unboxing. Let me get this set up so that we can actually go through all the parts and I'll show you how everything works on this one as well. It's a quick overview of it so you can see on this unit what you're getting. Now this is the original unit that I've been using for a long time here. You can see there's that plate and my bit. I keep everything right here. I added a little two by four onto the side of my workstation. I made little spots to basically hold all my components. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out how to set up something similar for this new one. And on that color, I don't know how well it's gonna show up here on the camera, but they did change the color a little bit. Again, I'm not sure how well this is gonna show, but the original version here is a little bit darker. Not that that's a huge issue, but I just wanted to say, I'm not crazy. I did notice that this was a different color on the base. And as far as an example of use, I've had this thing, I'm guessing about six, seven months, maybe longer. It might actually be closer to a year. You can kind of see the weathering. You know, the brass has gotten a little bit darker from my fingers using it. It obviously gets dusty and grimy out here in the shop. I try to keep it as clean as I can, but it has held up extremely well. Okay, so the first thing I did was I got a piece of three quarter inch plywood. So I'm going to attach the jig onto this because I don't want to screw it directly to my workbench. And I want to be able to show these supports. The steel support arms just go into these holes on the side and then they lock in place with these bolts here using this Allen wrench, the longer of the two that are included in the package. And that's how you tighten those down, which tightens these down. And once these are held in place, you have a couple of different ways that you can utilize these support arms. So firstly, if you have them positioned like I do now with the L facing this direction, 
then this part right here lines up directly with the inside of the jig. So when you slide a piece of wood in here, it's gonna be flushed up against. And here's a view of the backside of this little support piece here. And if you notice, they've got this little brass piece that is your lock. The way it's on there right now is through this opening. And in order to lock down that side, we need to move this brass lock over to this hole right here. You can see that. Right now, the way it's positioned would be to stop it going from this side, which would make it like a stop block. So if this was positioned like this in this orientation, you would use this to stop that from moving. And then to stop it the other way, we just take this out. And you can see that's quite long. Put it in this way. So now, if I tighten this down, it's gonna keep that from moving this direction on the support arm. Now to show really quick how this would actually work. So if you have it in this position, the board lines up directly flush with the backside up here. So you could lock this in place and it's gonna basically give you the support on the front side. Now, if I were to switch the orientation of this, it does become a stop block, which I think is pretty cool. Slide this back on. Let's say we wanted to have it positioned right at four inches. So you could measure from the edge here to where you needed it to be. Tighten this down, of course. Now that's not gonna move. You could just slide your boards in. They're always gonna stop at the same point. You lock them down and it's gonna increase your speed a lot more because you're not worrying about making the measurement from wherever you need to drill to the edge of this. I think it's a really cool idea. And it's definitely gonna speed up, especially if you're doing cabinets or tables or you're building something where you need a lot of the same pocket holes, that's really gonna work well. All right, now that I got this baseline set up, I wanna show you something really fast that I built. You saw the piece of plywood, but I actually laid out a couple of extra pieces of scrap wood just to help keep things organized with this particular setup. And I hadn't tried this before, but I actually think it turned out pretty good. I did put a rear support across the back that lined up right with the back of the jig. And then I used a couple more pieces of scrap wood. I just glued these down and it created a little spot for me to hold the components. And now this kind of just stays together and I can just lift this up and store it wherever I need to here in the shop. Now in full transparency, obviously if this stuff could somehow store in the jig itself, it would be much more beneficial than this. I realize not everybody's gonna wanna build something right away, but I have to say this does work pretty well. I drilled a little hole there for this to fit into, so it stays in place. And then my other components here, I'll probably keep the drill bit inside of the plastic when I'm not using it. That's the plate to put on the bottom in order to remove this and clamp it down, say with one of these type of clamps. But I can lift it up, take it with me, pick this whole thing up and it just moves real easy and I can store it wherever I need to. Hopefully this would be a great setup for yourself and it would work for you in your shop. And for some test drilling, I've got a one by that's got some stain in it already. I've got a two by four, a two by six, and then a piece of MDF. So we can kind of see how this works with a few different types of boards. I'm gonna get the vacuum attachment hooked up to here so that we're not making a huge mess. And let's start drilling. So these little hash marks here on the back are designed for you to be able to see how thick the wood is that you're using. So if I lay a plank in there, we can see it's basically at three quarters of an inch. And that makes sense because this is a one by. So that is what tells you how thick the wood is if you were unsure. And this is the measurement that you're gonna translate out here to the front side. And this is the part here that locks it down. We'll come back to that in a moment. So here on the front, you've got these two little knobs here that you can loosen. And that will allow this to slide up and down. If we wanted to set it to three quarters here or 19 millimeters, tighten that down and it's ready to go. One last quick note here is this is the vacuum attachment. If you're not gonna be using a vacuum, I recommend taking this off so that debris can fall out of the front. Otherwise it just gets clogged up in this piece here. If you are using the back attachment though, which I do recommend, this attaches with the same Allen ring. So this one here, the same one that attaches the bolts to lock in the rails. And as far as how this part works, this is your lever that tightens down, put a board in place. And if we go to tighten it, you can notice there's a gap still. So you just want to loosen this until it has a nice hold and then you push the locking nut back up and lock that in place here, which will keep this from climbing in. Now what I like to do is open this up a little, give it another half of a turn or so, hold it, 
and then now that board is gonna be locked in place. Now the last thing to do before you start drilling is to set the depth of your drill bit itself. For that, they've got this nifty little tool here, which goes into this spot. Now what you wanna do is you want your drill bit to come down and make contact with whatever the thickness is of your board. So in here, I'm gonna position that with the three quarter inch where it needs to be so that when the bit goes through the opening, it touches where it should. And again, our locking collar, first thing I'm gonna do is take the drill bit, place it through. And with the drill bit on the spot where it needs to be, lower the locking collar. We'll tighten that in place. And now the drill bit is ready to go. So we're already set up for this board here. So we're gonna use the one by the start. So that's locked in place and ready to go. And remember, we've already got this set up for this type of board. And on your drill, you'd wanna make sure you've got it set to drill and not just say on like a other torque setting, put that thing to drill. So these are the first two drill holes that we created and uh, up against the stain, you can kind of see a nice there against the grain. It does pretty good. It's a little bit of break out there, but nothing too bad. I mean, easily sand that off in a couple of seconds. And inside there, you can see where the bit makes the additional hole for that pocket screw to fit into in order to give you that good connection. And we stop again a sec on the vacuum so you can kind of take a look. Again, you can see some of this here, but again, this is against the grain on some pine wood. This isn't anything crazy. This is just me knocking down my finger. That's not me sanding it or anything. Overall, consistent, straight lines. These look nice to me. Kind of shows what you can do. Nothing blew out here on the bottom. Nothing came out of the backside. So there you go on that. So let's jump over to one of the thicker boards and I'll show the setup. And on this one, you can see a little bit more blowout there. And with a two by four like this, again, I don't expect that not to happen when I'm drilling against the grain. Put it in vertically. And you can see super, super minimal. Just a couple tiny pieces there. So I'm drilling with the grain of the wood, with the grain, and then against it. like there's some blowout as well it looks like it's kind of attaching to the facing of this I'm gonna grab a piece of sandpaper to see how hard that is to actually get off I don't work with MDF that often and this is obviously already coated or painted but I have a 60 grit sponge and I rub that on there real brief and it cleans it up pretty nice these were the vertical holes do the same thing just a couple seconds with that, that 80 grit actually, it's not 60 and it comes right off. Now, the last thing I wanna show is with the vacuum attachment taken off so you guys can see how much debris comes out of here. And that's just two cuts in the one by. So you can see the mess that you're kind of left with there. To me, if you have a vac, hook it up, if you don't, just plan for being able to clean this up a little bit here. It does store a good amount of sawdust in there. Don't leave all that old wood sitting in there. You're just gonna mess this up over time and, and corrode or just gonna get stuck and cause clogs or whatever. So if you're not gonna use a vac, just make sure you clean up after you're done. All right, that wraps up this video on the M2 Precision Joinery System from Mazka Tools. 
This thing is awesome. I really like the addition of the side rails. Now that little piece of plywood that I used and the little pieces of trim that I put on there is obviously a really great way to make this thing portable and you can use it at your workstation. And maybe you could even just screw that thing down or clamp the entire thing down to a workstation so that it doesn't move around while you're working. But I think it does make everything portable and it still gives you those extra support arms that you can use on top of it being portable. So anyways, I hope you guys like this video. I will put some links at the end of this here to the other Mosca videos or just check for those on the channel. I reviewed the M1 as well as I did like a quick tip video to show how to just get it set up. I do have a couple more videos coming soon on some of their smaller units where you just kind of clamp them down. Thanks so much as always for all the support. Links to social media. Come hang out with us and see what else we have going on. See you soon in the next video.